Moving on from the previous video where we actually created our first app, we're now gonna run that app in the Android or in an Android virtual device. Okay, as always to start, we're gonna go into the Android Developer Tools bundle folder, click into that, double click into Eclipse, and we're gonna start Eclipse. Click OK to accept the default workspace and wait for it to load. We'll wait for Eclipse to finish initializing the project. And you'll know that that's finished once the screen's updated, as you can see now with the app. And we'll just click on that app. And before we actually get in there to start running it, we're gonna start an Android virtual device. So I suggest any time you go into Eclipse and start uh, uh, you know, developing, you wanna click on Window, go into Android Virtual Device Manager and start your virtual device. So I'm gonna do that now start the device and basically leave it running. So I suggest you do that, just leave it running because invariably if you're in a hurry, you want to do a quick bit of test. If you haven't got it running, you'll need to go through this process of starting and it can, well, it doesn't take long, but it's just a little bit annoying. So my workflow tends to be start Eclipse, immediately start the Android virtual device and then I know it's in the background and ready to go where I'm ready. So I'm gonna click on start and start that now. Okay, I'm gonna click on launch. And as soon as I can, I'm gonna close this down and go back to the main screen. Okay, so while the uh, virtual device is starting, I just wanna go through and talk about some of the run options. So the first time you go to run an app, a new app that you've set up in Eclipse, it'll probably come up and ask you some information for some information. So I'm going to click on the run, go into the run menu and click on run. Now it asks you select a way to run my first app. So the reason it's asking this is if you recall in earlier videos, I mentioned that Eclipse was built not just specifically for Android applications. Consequently, it's asking a variety of ways for you to run this code, be it an Android application, Android JUnit tests, or a Java applet, which is sort of a graphical uh, version of Java, or just a Java application or a JUnit test. Now, we obviously know that this is an Android application, so we're gonna run it that way. And what will happen is that choice will be remembered, and I'll show you how to edit that uh, once we get to the next stage. But I'll just tab over and make sure our virtual device is running. Yes, that's now running, so that's good. So I'll go back to Eclipse, and we're gonna select on Android application and click on OK. So down the bottom right hand corner, you can see it's launching my first app, building workspace, and what it is also doing then is transferring the application that it's created to the emulator, or to the app, also known as the Android virtual device. So if you go back there and have a look and unlock it, you can see our first app is now running. You can see my created little icon, our name, my first app, and hello world, which was the default uh, functionality that's built into that template when we created a new project. And I can click on back, and I can go into, click OK there, and click on there to go into the settings. Acknowledge that, and you can see our first app, my first app. You can see the little uh, selection of the world and the crude little uh, attempt at an icon I've got there, and obviously also the name as well. So you can see now that the, the application name maps to the little bit of, uh, or the label that's under the icon. So that's really all there is to running it on an Android virtual device, but let's just swing back to Eclipse because there's a few other things I wanna show you. Now, first things first, the next time we go to run this, it's gonna go straight in and run it. Now, I'm gonna talk about Logcat shortly, but you notice that it didn't prompt us this time for uh, any confirmation as to where to run that device. That can get annoying sometimes if you want to uh, you know, run it on a physical device and it's running it on the wrong device. Quite an easy thing to fix right click on the app, click on run as, and you can actually then choose which way you want to run it. Or alternatively, you can go into run configurations. And what we can do here is we can configure it. We can choose a target. For example, we could always choose, always pick a compatible device to run it on. Um, I like selecting always prompt to pick device. That way, if you're running uh, an Android uh, virtual device and a physical device, uh, you'll need to choose that when you go to run your application. That can be a good way of doing it. That's what I suggest you normally do, but it's certainly up to you. The other option is just to launch launch on all compatible devices, active devices or active AVDs, it's up to you. 
it's really depending on which way you want to configure it it's where you're going to be testing most of the time i, re I recommend for general sort of uh, you know, testing of interface things you know the way that the app looks and so on and so forth probably the emulator is okay but anytime you want to start testing any real world performance and see what it looks like on a real android device then you'll be wanting to run that on a real android device so i by default i normally click on always pick so i'm going to apply that change anyway and close so now when we run it's going to pop up with this screen it's going to actually prompt you you know where do you want to run this and notice here it also it says select a device with minimum api level 16. if you recall that we set up the api level when we were creating the new project so it's asking for something that actually wants to you know, that has that minimum level and in actual fact the the application won't run if it's older than that all right, so I think oh, there's one other thing I want to do before we finish the video, and that's talk about Logcat. And this is a way for you to really get some feedback from your application. And if there's any errors, you know, something crashes, you'll get that feedback here in this spot. That's why I like using Logcat, but you will also get similar output when you actually use the console as well. So there's two options there for you to select, and we'll be talking more, and I'll be showing you more about that in future videos. Okay, so that's it. So next video, we're going to do essentially the same thing, but we're going to be running it on a physical Android device.